Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Dear brother priests who work so faithfully in so many linguistic and cultural sectors of our archdiocese, dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus is the voice of life. Sunday after Sunday, as we listen to the Gospels, we hear the voice of Jesus. He summons us to repentance. He heals the sick. He calls the apostles. He teaches through parables. He proclaims the kingdom of God. Yet today, the fifth Sunday of Lent, as we make final preparation to celebrate the mysteries of our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection in Holy Week and the Easter Triduum, we hear the voice of Jesus in a unique way, in a distinctive key. The voice of Jesus calls his friend, Lazarus, to come forth from death. The voice of Jesus reaches beyond the pain and suffering of death. His voice reaches across the terrible border of death and summons Lazarus to life. This is why St. Athanasius tells us that Jesus is the voice of life. How fitting that today, the day when the voice of Jesus changes death to life and sorrow to joy, we celebrate National Migration Week. The church's teaching on justice for immigrants does not begin with political positions or partisan discussion. Our teaching on justice for immigrants begins with the voice of God and is thoroughly biblical. The church has honored the dignity of immigrants since the day that God first summoned Abraham and said to him, go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. In today's gospel, we learn in a vivid manner that Jesus in every instance honors this promise. Jesus, the voice of life, approaches the tomb of his friend Lazarus and orders that the stone be removed. Every day, forced migrants and refugees, immigrants and victims of human trafficking meet the cold and seemingly immovable stone of violence and death. They meet the hard and coarse stone of fences and detention centers, of misperception and prejudice, of traffickers and harsh oppressors, of violence and injustice, of harsh treatment and suspicion, of exploitation and exile. The voice of the church, like the voice of Jesus, proclaims that the stone must be taken away. St. Maximus the Confessor emphasizes that in the gospel passage we just heard proclaimed, Jesus calls Lazarus by name. St. Maximum tells us that the voice of Jesus, the Son of God, who says, Lazarus, come out, that this voice is so powerful that if Jesus had not called Lazarus by name, the great power of Jesus would have summoned 
all those in their graves to rise. Notice also that the Gospel of St. John tells us that Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Jesus cries out in a loud voice because his words must cross over into the world of the dead. His voice also penetrates the chasm of sin. Jesus, the voice of life, calls out today. We hear the loud voice of Jesus, not simply in its echo, but his voice, the voice of life. He summons us forth from our own complacency. The voice of Jesus is not a whisper. It is loud and full of confidence. Jesus calls us to welcome the stranger, and as such, we must provide adequate medical care, nutrition, education, and resettlement to refugees and those in flight. The church must protect vulnerable men, women, and children from the horrors of human trafficking. We will not rest until the terrible affront to human dignity, that is human trafficking, is eliminated from every corner of the globe. The voice of Jesus insists on it. As Jesus does not abandon Lazarus, so too the church does not abandon her own sons and daughters who seek freedom from oppression and persecution. Jesus does not abandon those whom he loves. The church cannot either. Pope Benedict XVI in his message earlier this year for the 97th World Day of Migrants and Refugees reminded us that the international community has precise commitments to those who flee from violence and persecution. The voice of Jesus tells us that human dignity is inviolable and that we must offer haven and protection, safe passage, respect and opportunities to those seeking asylum. When we welcome our brothers and sisters, we welcome Jesus. Jesus himself was a stranger in a foreign land. He came from heaven to save us. As an infant, he fled into Egypt in the arms of the Blessed Mother under the guidance of St. Joseph so as to escape the brutality of Herod. Jesus proclaimed during his public ministry that he had no place to place his head. And soon we will experience again the ultimate victory of love. The Lord Jesus suffered, died, and was buried. Soon we will celebrate the fact that he is not simply called out to the dead. He went down among the dead to seek out the lost and he rose again victorious in his glorious resurrection. This is the good news, dear friends, that we preach. This is the core of the church's commitment to evangelization. Pope Benedict XVI, in his post-synodal apostolic exhortation on the word of God in the life and mission of the church, emphasizes the intimate connection between the Word of God and migration. The Holy Father says, quote, large numbers of people who know nothing of Christ or who have an inadequate understanding of him are settling in countries of Christian tradition. At the same time, persons from nations deeply marked by Christian faith are emigrating to countries where Christ needs to be proclaimed 
and a new evangelization is determined. These situations offer new possibilities for the spread of God's word. Words of Pope Benedict XVI. Today, in the words of our Holy Father, the voice of the church, the voice of Christ summons us anew. Yes, dear friends, the voice of Jesus is the voice of life. He gives us Our Lady of Guadalupe as the patroness of the Americas, so that under the protection of her mantle, her sons and daughters may flee oppression and seek new life. On the basis of our common bond of faith in Jesus Christ, we welcome and stand in solidarity with the migrants and refugees in our parishes and communities. The Church is deeply grateful for the contribution of the faithful from so many diverse communities of ethnic origin. I mentioned at the beginning how proud we are of the Church of Jesus Christ made up of people from every nation under heaven coming together in the unity of Jesus Christ from every race and nation and people under heaven. The Church is honored to serve these our brothers and sisters who approach us for spiritual consolation and pastoral care. And for this particular dimension, I am particularly grateful to our priests who so generously and faithfully fulfill this mission. I am grateful for the good works of the Archdiocesan Office for pastoral care for migrants and refugees. Together, we listen to the voice of Jesus, the voice of life, the voice that crosses even into the most hardened heart and summons us anew to reach out with love to our brothers and sisters. May then we listen attentively to this voice of Jesus so that together we may be faithful to the life of charity and so be ready to celebrate again the victorious triumph of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.